lot of people have been asking me if I've been nervous, you know, before I'm about to give this. Uh, the answer is yes, I'm very nervous. Um, I put off writing this speech for a long time. There are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that I have the attention span of a goldfish on crack. It's awful. I often lose my focus and wind up repeating myself. I often lose my focus and wind up repeating myself. As you can imagine, this made it very hard to get started. But the second, and probably more important reason, is that in the words of Calvin and Hobbes cartoonist Bill Watterson, you can't turn on creativity like a faucet. You have to be in the right mood. Last minute panic. The right mood finally hit me around 1.30 this afternoon when, after being asked for a week by many of my friends and sometimes completely, straight, completely random strangers off the street, whether or not I had written my speech yet, it occurred to me that I should at least start to entertain the possibility of thinking about potentially beginning to consider writing something down at some point. Maybe. <laughs> I'm giving the speech today because, due to religious observance, I won't be able to attend graduation. I know a lot, and by a lot I mean maybe three of you, aren't happy about this. <laughs> but I thought of a solution which should satisfy everyone involved. Here's how it works. I'll record myself making a bunch of really sarcastic and bitter remarks on a whole group of wide variety of topics. And anytime you start to wish I was there, you can listen to a couple on your MP3 player. It'll be like I was never gone. <laughs> but back to my speech. I don't wish to imply that I wasn't given any suggestions about what to say. On the contrary, many of my friends made a point of informing me at length of what I should say. One of them wanted me to mention his name during the speech. Well, guess what? I'm not going to do it, Joe Coakley. <laughs> or Heather. Another wanted me to wish your dad happy birthday. So, happy birthday, Mr. Rollins. Um, and a lot of other people had... Oh, yeah, we can clap. Clap, good. <laughs> And a lot of other people had a lot of other ideas, most of which I would not feel entirely comfortable doing until my diploma can no longer be legally revoked. <laughs> in, all serious note, in all seriousness, though, there is something I'd like to say. I'm not going to tell you about what a blast high school was or how looking back it was all really wonderful and we're going to miss it terribly. It wasn't and we're not. <laughs> But there were the occasional good teachers, you know who you are, the occasional good friends, you know who you are, and the occasional good moments, they know who they were. <laughs> that we're never going to forget. For better or worse, we're all different people than when we came here four years ago. For four years, this was a large part of our world. And now it's over. This is what I want to say to you. Find something you're passionate about and live it. I say live it and not do it because there's a world of difference between living and doing. You can do a lot of things, but you'll never live something until it becomes your passion and your fuel, your reason for getting up in the morning. So let me say it again. Find something you're passionate about and live it. Of all the things I could have chosen to say to you, why this? The answer is simple. The rest of your life, and this is the rest of your life we're talking about, and I can think of no better advice to give to you than to spend it on something you care deeply about. Again, why? Because at some point in your life, as you approach the end of it, you're going to have to look back and, back and ask yourself, was it worth it? We're still young. That's not an excuse, that's an advantage. We still have time if we're willing to make sure that our answer isn't no. I don't mean to say that we can't have fun anymore, that everything from here on out is serious business and don't you forget it. I hope you spend a lot of time laughing, or at least smiling. In fact, I see no better way to ensure this than to live out your passion. And I hope, most of all, that when it comes time to ask ourselves whether or not our lives were worth it, we can answer without doubt, yes. Yes, they were. Because apparently we answer in the plural. You can tell who the grammar nerds are by who laughed at that. <laughs> now, although I may not have written that, this until this afternoon, I did spend a lot of time before that thinking about it. I realized that this is the last time I'm going to see most of you, and I wanted to end my speech with something memorable. So I thought, and I thought, and eventually turned to the biggest source of wisdom known to mankind and picked this quote. None of the secrets of success will work unless you do. Lucky numbers 3, 4, 8, 33, 34, 37. All right, thank you all. Have a good rest of the night.